Welcome to Signs and Wonders. Strange things are happening around the world, guys. Thank you so much for watching this End Times News channel. A massive thank you to my Patreons, channel members, to all those who have been lucky enough to bless my channel any way you can, either financially or just helping spread the, the news, you know, through Facebook, stuff like that. Really goes a long way by just sharing the videos, guys. I really appreciate it. I said it before and I say it again. It's it's people like us, you guys, we're a family and we help keep this channel running by sharing these videos and spreading the word. Please remember to like, subscribe, and like I said, sharing the videos is a huge, it goes a real long way on YouTube, guys. Share wherever you can, Facebook, Twitter, etc. Places like that would be really awesome. Historic crop loss as severe frost hits Brazil. Farmers across Brazil are reporting widespread crop loss due to severe frosts affecting the country over the past three weeks. After several destructive cold waves, another blast is expected over the weekend, July 24th and 25th, followed by yet another at the end of the month. The new week has begun with the already shattered corn market in Brazil enduring yet another blow as a new cold wave swept through the center south of Brazil, bringing frost to corn producing states and raising fresh concerns about export volumes and contract breaches, uh, Ar Argency's reports. It's going to be a historic crop loss, Daniel Sequeri from local consultancy Agrural told Argy Census. On Monday, July 19th, frosts hit parts of the streets of Paranara and Mata Grosso do Sul, with late planted corn areas likely affected. The cold wave reached its peak on Tuesday, July 20th, with forecasts showing potential fresh frosts in the streets of Parana, Managaradao, Sul, uh, Sao Paulo, Pao, and Manas. Garyas? Sorry, it's really hard to pronounce some of these places, guys. According to a report by Marco Antonio dos Santos of Rural Clima, Tuesday's frost hit crops including sugarcane, coffee, and orange. Coffee brokers said this frost was stronger than the last one. Output losses will be extremely large across all producing states apart from Mato Grosso. Parna and Mato Grosso do Sul will have no export capacity whatsoever, Sequori said. The situation is so dramatic that there will be not any corn left in the market in September and the country will need to import much more from Argentina, Victor Martins from Hedge Point Global Markets said. According to Soybean and Corn Advisor President Dr. Michael Cordonier, temperatures in southern Brazil dipped below freezing three weeks ago and it's expected to be even colder this week. The coldest in over 20 years in some of these areas. And I like to tell people that 20 years ago there was not much safarina corn. And now that crop accounts for three quarters of all of Brazil's corn production. Catastrophic floods caused by extremely heavy rains claims lives of at least 29 people in Hainan, China. At least 29 people have been killed and seven others remain missing after heavy rains affecting China's central province of Henan since July 16th intensified on July 20th, 2021. And no, I'm not being stereotypical to whoever, whoever left the comment. Just because I can't pronounce every Chinese town, it doesn't mean I'm making fun of them there. You know who you are. Whoever left that comment in my last video. 25 of them died and 7 remained missing in Henan's capital, Zhenzhou, after massive floods caused by a month's worth of July's rains in just one hour. Four people died in severe floods that hit the city of Gongui on the same day. Zhenzhou meteorologists said the level of rains the capital received in three days was once in a thousand years. That's, that's insane. Heavy rains are expected to continue affecting parts of the province over the next two days. More than 3,000 PLA soldiers and personnel were dispatched to help with search and rescue operations. Zingzhou received average precipitation of 18 inches within 24 hours, 1700 LT on July 20th, making it the highest daily rainfall since the weather records in the city began. 
The city has also reported record high hourly precipitation of 7.9 inches between 1600 and 1700 hours LT or 0800 and 0900 hours UTC. The accumulated rainfall reached 17.6 inches on average from 1800 hours LT on Sunday, July 18th to midnight LT on Tuesday, July 20th. From Saturday, July 17th to Tuesday, July 20th, the capital city recorded 24.2 inches of rain. Nearly a whole year's worth of rain fell in just a couple of days. Crazy, crazy. This is a level seen only once in a thousand years, according to the local meteorologists. Zheng Zhao's average monthly rainfall for July is 7.6 inches. July is also its wettest month, followed by August with 5.8 inches and September with 3.4 inches. At least 29 people have sadly been killed and seven others remain missing after heavy rains affecting China's central province of Henan since July 16th intensified on July 20th, 2021. 25 of them died and seven remain missing in Henan's capital, Zhenzhou, after massive floods caused by a month's worth of July's rains in just one hour. That is so crazy. Four people died in severe floods that hit the city of Gongoi on the same day. Zheng Zhao's meteorologist said the level of rains the capital received in three days was once in a thousand years. Heavy rains are expected to continue affecting parts of the province over the next two days. Like I said, more than 3,000 PLA soldiers and personnel were dispatched to help with search and rescue operations. Zheng Zhao received an average precipitation of 457.5 millimeters within 24 hours on July 20th, making it the highest daily rainfall since the weather records in that city began. The city has also reported high record hourly precipitation of 201.9 millimeters between 1600 and 1700 hours. That's a lot. The accumulated rainfall reached 449 millimeters on average from 1800 hours LT on Sunday, July 18th to midnight on Tuesday, July 20th. From Saturday, July 17th to Tuesday, July 20th, the capital city recorded 617.1 millimeters of rain, nearly the annual average of 640 millimeters of rain. So in nearly one day, they got almost a whole year's worth of rain. Can you imagine that? This is a level seen only once in a thousand years, according to local meteorologists. I don't know why it keeps repeating this, guys, but I guess it's because it's a major deal. Sing Zhao's average monthly rainfall for July is usually 7.6 inches. July is also the wettest month, followed by August with 147 millimeters and September with 87 millimeters. Read more about this event. Massive flooding hit Zheng Zhao after more than 200 millimeters of rain in just one hour. China, the Watchers, July 20th, 2021. Other parts of the province were also badly affected with dozens other cities flooded. At least four people were killed in Gongai, a city located by the banks of the Yellow River, like Zhengzhou. Local media reported widespread collapse of homes and structures due to heavy rains. At least 31 large and medium-sized reservoirs have seen water levels rise above the alert level after torrential rains battered most parts of the province on Monday and Tuesday, July 19th and 20th. In the Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region, floods affected more than 16,000 people as two dams collapsed on July 18th after two days of heavy rainfall, the highest since record-keeping began in 60 years. Biblical flooding devastates mainland China, shocking new footage out of Zhengzhou. China shows a trainload of stranded passengers waiting for help as devastating floodwaters rise within the train car. A government-run Chinese paper posted the below video to its Twitter account showing people potentially waiting in chest-deep, murky water for rescue as floodwaters apparently rise all around them. The region where this occurred apparently received its highest ever amount of rain in a single day, resulting in widespread devastation, much like what is also being reported out of Germany, where flooding is causing massive damage. 
telling you, strange things around the world are happening, guys. The below video offers another look outside of a subway train as floodwaters rush along like a giant muddy river below ground. According to the BBC, rescue crews have been busily working to extract as many people as they can from flooded subway tubes before water levels reach too high a level for survival. The process has reportedly been a challenge to say the least. The below video shows more of the flooding in Germany as the torrential river flows at high speed through the old city street. In China, loss of life is being reported all over the place as area residents get swept away in the rushing floodwaters. The video below, viewer discretion is advised, shows various scenes that people captured of people being swept away, cars sinking beneath the surface, and even a street collapse collapsing as people fall into it. The People's Liberation Army is also warning that the Yiatan Dam in the center of China would collapse at any time due to unprecedented water flow that causes substantial damage to its structure. I'll post a, I'll post a link to the video in the comment section, guys. The worst part is that the rains have not stopped and are expected to continue for at least another 24 hours, which will result in even more damage and loss of life. When will it end now? Many are now wondering this. Canadian farmers report massive crop damage from heat wave. Canadian farmers in different provinces reported massive damage to their crops as a result of a heat wave in the country. A little closer to home now for me, eh guys? The heat wave caused many areas to record searing temperatures in late June 2021. Aside from damaging crops, it also caused the deaths of many people and triggered wildfires across the region. Fruit growers in the province of British Columbia, where I live, said the heat wave reportedly cooked fruits while still on the branch. BC Fruit Growers Association, or the BCFGA president and orchestrated Pinder Dawali told the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, it seems like somebody took a blowtorch to the fruit and just singed it. He described the cherries affected by the heat wave. They became brown in color with burnt leaves and dry stems. According to Diwali, 50 to 70% of cherry crops were damaged in the heat wave. He added that apples, apricots, and other stone fruits also reported damage, I'll bet to a lesser degree. The overall financial impact is going to be great on the farmers, Dawali said. Prior to the heat wave, the cherry crop was shaping up to be one of the best. It's too bad. However, the heat wave's arrival caused the Okanagan and Fraser Valley's BC's two major fruit growing regions to see multiple days of temperatures above 40 degrees Celsius, which is a hundred which is a hundred and something Fahrenheit, I believe. Dawali added the high temperatures in both daytime and nighttime gave no room for the cherries to cool down. He mentioned cherries that looked good outside, yet felt hot right to the pit as an example of this. BC Cherry Association President and Fruit Farmer Sukhpal Bal also shared Diwali's sentiments. It's just so discouraging to see that this heat wave came in and literally cooked a lot of the cherries, he laminated. Ball noted that this is the third year in a row where extreme weather events damaged the cherry crop following torrential rain in 2019 and a cold spell in early 2020. Damage from the heat wave spared no fruit, raspberries, and blueberries growing in the Fraser Valley also bore the brunt of the heat wave. These included the fruits growing at David Mutt's farm in Abbotsford, located east of BC's capital, Vancouver. The plants are literally just cooked. You can pull the leaves off and they just crinkle in your hands, he said. According to Mutz, the three-day period between June 26 and June 28 caused the most damage to his crops. He estimated that 75% of his early raspberry crop and between 10 and 30% of his blueberry harvest are of such poor quality that they can only be used for juice. Nevertheless, Mutz expressed optimism that the later raspberry season to last until October will be profitable. Let's hope. While the Canada heat wave impacted cherries and berries, grapes have been left largely unscathed by the heat. Well, at least that's good. 
but this did not mean they were safe as the resulting wildfires also left their mark on the fruits. Whistleblower Hasboro mandating critical race theory for all employees claims that white kids are privileged and inherently racist. Hasbro, a popular toy manufacturer, is mandating all its employees to accept critical race theory and apply it throughout the company. The company's new training manual suggests that white kids are privileged, biased, and inherently racist. The material demeans white kids and judges them on the color of their skin, imparting racist guilt on children as young as three and four years old. Wow. A Hasbro whistleblower named David Johnson sat down with James O'Keefe of Project Ver Veritas to speak about the company's racist training propaganda. He said the training is intended to influence employee behavior to promote racial uh, equity in marketing messages, packaging, and toy manufacturing. Hasbro whistleblower unveils critical race theory, indoctrination of all employees. The whistleblower reveals that Hasbro is using a critical race theory curriculum developed by conscious kids. The, Mar the Marxist organization claims to be an education research and policy organization dedicated to equity and promoting healthy racial identity development in youth. Bunch of word salad to me. A closer inspection of the material shows that Conscious Kids is stereotyping children with white skin, forcing them to feel shame for their heritage. The material profiles children based on the color of their skin and, and accuses white children of inherent racism. The material is blatantly racist itself and psychologically abusive toward children. We're talking about kids as young as three and four years old here, guys. Conscious Kids say their mission is to support organizations, families, and educators in taking action to disrupt racism in kids. Hasbro turns out to be one of the organizations promoting this Marxist race-baiting propaganda. Johnson said he was forced to take part in the new training exercise where the Conscious Kids co-founders Katie Izuka and Ramon Stevens lectured Hasbro employees about infants, inherent racism, and how white privilege is pervasive in toddlers. I decided to come to Project Veritas because I opposed the indoctrination of children that they wanted to push and I felt that more people needed to know about it, Johnson said. Well, that's very good of him. They want to introduce children into racial bias at an early age before they're really able to understand what race and racism is. Yeah, it's crazy. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. Please like, share, subscribe, and God bless you and your loved ones.